Kill the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello, Facebook family and friends. What a joy to be able to welcome you today to this wonderful broadcast. You know, it's always a joy to serve you the grace of God to teach you the word of God. Remember, this season we are on with Riot Live and the Counselor every day. Teaching and teaching, bringing clarity to God's word. You must remember that every time we study the word of God, the intent is to equip you so that you can also equip others. Brother Paul said to Timothy, the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same, commit to faithful men who shall in turn commit to others. The word of God is going to come with so much power. Revelation knowledge is going to come you know, to you through the teaching of God's word on this broadcast. And every day, the word comes twice on this platform. 12 noon GMT plus 1 and 10 p.m. GMT plus 1 every day right here on Facebook. Except when we go live each evening at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. And I'm so excited because we're examining very critical subjects of the scripture. Doctrinal exegesis bringing clarity and equipping you in the knowledge of Christ. Just before we get into the service of today, I want to also mention, if you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church, two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You're denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. Fasten your seat bells right now as I take you into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy view. A believer does not need to break any foundation because the only foundation a believer has is Christ. You don't break Christ. Once you are born again, you are on a sure foundation. If things are not working, it's not because you are under a curse. It's not because you are not born again. No. Things may not be working because of certain miscalculations on your part or lack of skill or lack of sensitivity to when the Holy Ghost gave you direction. But it cannot be because there's a foundation. So that is a deception and it's fraud to the body of Christ. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Rio, Comfort FM 95.1 Rio, Excel FM 106.9 Rio, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Rio, Unio FM 100.7 Rio, and Heritage FM 104.9. And also live on Sundays, 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service. Venue, Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. You can also watch these programs live on Kingdom Live Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV decoder. You can also follow Abel Damino's Facebook page. 
public figure as well as YouTube, Twitter and Instagram handles to watch real time. Host Drs. Abel and Rachel Damino. All right, we've been teaching on prayer and it's just been a wonderful time of learning. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. John taught his disciples, so the disciples of Jesus asked Jesus to teach them to pray. And we've been looking at prayer by precept and example. That means they were not talking to him when he was praying. Because the Bible says it's when he ceased. They were not talking to him when he was praying. Some people don't have respect. When they see you praying, then they want to come and talk to you at that time. These people waited till he finished praying. Then they now spoke to him. All right? Teaching has to do with discipleship. A disciple means an apprentice. One who is, you know, uh, learning an art from you. He learns both the theory and the practicals. They saw Jesus prayed and also he prayed with them. When we see the word of God, we see that Jesus is God Almighty. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the begotten of the Father. So Jesus is God who became a man. But if you observe carefully, Jesus gave himself to prayer. He didn't just go about saying, I decree a thing and it shall be established. You know, that's a common thing among you know, Pentecostals. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Go about decreeing things. Well, first of all, there is no such things like going about to decree things and they shall be established. Because that scripture, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established, only appeared once. And it's in the book of Job. And it's Job's foolish friend who made that statement. It's a statement from a foolish person. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. It's not a doctrine. It's not a doctrine of practice. It's not a doctrine for Christian living. Is a foolish man who made a statement. And a lot of believers have taken that to be a doctrine for their oppression. Thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. So, Jesus himself didn't go about decreeing things. He went about praying. He spent time praying. You see Jesus praying. He didn't just go about decreeing things for them to be established. He spent quality time in prayer. We see Jesus praying all over the place. You know, from the baptism of John, just before he went into the water... The Bible tells us he was praying in Luke chapter 3 verse 21. Right at the garden of Gethsemane, he was also praying. Right on the cross, he was also praying. Always praying. Jesus always prayed and he wasn't going about decreeing and declaring things. Alright, so it's important because if you don't understand that, you can easily replace prayer with strategies. You know, strategies, decree things, think smart, feel good about yourself. So the time you ought to spend in prayer, you're going about strategizing. And you forget that prayer produces possibilities. Prayer produces possibilities. Jesus was such anointed in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus was anointed. Very anointed. But yet it is Jesus who said men ought always to pray and not to faint. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1. He was anointed but he said men ought always to pray and not to faint. And when you look at his life he was always praying. Prayer prevents poor performance. All Christians of my time used to say, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. And then a believer of my time will say, what do you mean? The book of Luke chapter 24, it says, you shall be endued with power from on high. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. 
Ephesians 1.19 talks about the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Well, you must remember that it is prayer that makes this power available. It is prayer that makes this power available. The power is in the believer, but it is prayer that makes it available for the believer to enjoy unlimited possibilities. So we've established that prayer is not an advice. Prayer is an instruction. Prayer is an instruction. Can everybody say that with me very loud? Prayer is an instruction. All right? So prayer is an instruction. The book of 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. That is an instruction. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That's an instruction, not an advice. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. That's an instruction. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So, if you don't pray, you are living in sin. Because prayer is not an advice. Prayer is an instruction for believers. You don't have to have a problem to pray. You pray all the time. Men ought always to pray. And somebody said, but I don't know what to pray about. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So you have no excuse. It's an instruction for all believers. Every time Paul said pray, he didn't say pray if you feel like it or not. No, he always said just pray. So that's number one, prayer is an instruction. Number two, Prayer is for all the time. It's fellowship. Fellowship. We are born of the Spirit, so we fellowship by praying in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Fellowship. Prayer is fellowship. Number three, prayer is service. The life of Christ is a life of service. When you grow up in Christ, you begin to think about others. Thinking about others and serving others in the body of Christ is a proof of spiritual growth. It's a proof of spiritual growth. Actually, New Testament prayer is situated around serving and praying for other people. Because prayer means you are dependent on the power of prayer. It's an expression of of your dependence on the power of prayer. So Jesus taught his disciples, but by precept and example. Matthew 28 verse 18, let's look at the teachings of Jesus. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye therefore and teach. That's instructive. All power is given to me. Now you go and teach. So one of the things that Jesus wanted us to teach all nations, which he has taught us, is prayer. Go and teach. Go and teach people how to pray. Look at John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Underline the word, your remembrance. He shall bring all things to your remembrance. He will teach you all things, and he shall bring all things to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost, the Comforter, whom the Father will send in my name. Now that word to your remembrance, he shall bring all things to your remembrance, means he shall bring all things to your understanding. But you know, the translators retained remembrance instead of understanding. Because they had a right in translating to use remembrance or understanding. Because those two words are interchangeably used in the Greek translation in this context. Bring back all things to your understanding. But King James decided to retain remembrance. That's where people got this one. As often as you do this, you remember. As often as you do this, 
You do it in remembrance of me. And then the church began to teach it as a memorial service. Remember me. I remember. Remember. So now we're doing memorial service. But I keep asking people all over the world, the so-called communion that is done in churches, which is supposed to be a memorial of Jesus. Do you do a memorial service for a person that is alive? Who do you do memorial service for? Huh? Dead. Is Jesus dead? Is he alive? Does he need a memorial service? Exactly. He does he need a memorial service. So we, we, we are not required to do a memorial service for Jesus. Because Jesus is not dead, he's alive. And he lives in our hearts actively. There's no way we forget him to remember him who lives inside our hearts. Do you forget yourself? Remember me. And many churches remember Jesus every week. Every week there is a communion remembrance service. But we have seen him. Glory to God. We see Jesus. We have seen him. So do this in remembrance of me actually means do this with the understanding of me. With the understanding. Look at 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four 24 to 25. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me or this do with the understanding of me. 25. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So when people read this, they now say, how can Dr. Damina say you shouldn't do Holy Communion? When even Brother Paul say, do it in remembrance of me. This was Paul making reference of what Luke said that he saw in his eyewitness account. This is a reference, it's not an instruction. This is not an apostolic instruction. He just quoted from what Luke said. Look at it in Luke chapter 22 verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. So brother Paul was making reference to what brother Luke communicated. Now, let me ask you a simple question. When Brother Luke communicated these realities to the, the, you know, in his writings, was he giving an instruction or he was reporting something? He was reporting something, all right? So he was not saying we should do it. He was reporting something. And in his reportage, he said, Jesus told the people that were with him then that this thing is being done in remembrance or with the understanding of me. Since he had not died, he has not been buried, he has not risen, there was a symbolic expression of what he was going to do. So you do it with the understanding of him. And you know, one time Jesus was speaking and he was bringing this reality out in John chapter 2 verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Next verse. Then said the Jews, 40 and 60 years was this temple in building. And will they wrap it up in three days? Pay attention. But he spake of the temple of his body. Hello? He spake of what? The temple of his body. 22. When therefore, pay attention, he was risen from the dead. His disciples remembered. His disciples understood. They remembered that he had said. They understood that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scriptures. And the word which Jesus had said. Because they now understood they believed. So the word remember is the word understanding. Remember and understanding are from the same Greek root word. Remember. Look at Luke 24 verse 6. You will see it again implied. He is not here, but is written. Remember how he spake. Understand how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Seven. Saying, 
the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and third day rise again next verse and they remembered his words they understood his words is it getting clear they understood his words so the word remember means to understand remember me do this with me in your understanding now john 16 12 i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now next verse how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come the holy ghost will show you things to come he will give you an understanding all right the spirit of truth so when we pray we pray with the help of the holy spirit and that's why i'm taking all this trip now look at isaiah 28 verse 9 whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts next verse for precept must be upon precept that's the way we teach doctrine that's the way we bring people to understand it precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little that is how we teach we teach precept upon precept line upon line here a little they are a little we can't teach everything in one day and that is why when you follow our teaching you must patiently continue to follow the problem with some people is they listen to one message and they conclude it makes a bad student out of you you must keep following it will take a bit of time for you to come to a place of understanding what we are teaching and communicating precept upon precept line upon line a little here a little there every time we gather a little here a little there every time we gather a little here it will take a bit of time for this little little to build up an understanding say i hear you yeah that's how we teach doctrine we don't just give everything at once a little here a little there precept upon precept people have to be taught by precept line upon line glory to god i say glory to god we saw jesus say pray always we saw jesus praying all the time luke chapter 6 verse 12 and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to god all night and i've told you jewish all night is 6 p.m to 6 a.m we saw that Jesus prayed with strong crying and tears. Jesus had a prayer life after the Holy Ghost came upon him. He had a prayer life. He didn't say, now I have the Holy Ghost, I don't need prayer. It was after the Holy Ghost came that he prayed all night, all day. He took time out to pray. Because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, first of all, you're not born again. You know, you can't be born again without the Holy Ghost. So every born again child of God has the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I have the Holy Ghost. Say it again, I have the Holy Ghost. He lives on my inside. Now say very loud, I am born of the Spirit. I live in the Spirit. I walk in the Spirit. I thought I would hear powerful, amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. He that does not have the Spirit of Christ is none of his. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you now. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. John 14, 16. We are talking about the Holy Ghost and the believer in prayer. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever abide with you for how long forever another comforter verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you another comforter he shall be in you 
and today he is in you john 14 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance hello and bring all things to your your under uh -huh. he shall bring all things to your understanding whatsoever i have said unto you so remembrance is understanding understanding is remembrance now the word comforter is the greek word parakletos it means a strengthener or someone who is a standby for you the comforter is someone you can depend upon he gave us an instruction to pray and he gave us a helper to help us pray he gave us an instruction to pray. Then he gave us a helper to help us pray. So we rely on the Holy Spirit to pray. And the Holy Ghost gives you strength. He gives you vigor. And he gives you power to pray. You know when I was growing up as a new Christian. And I was learning to pray. I remember back then. Whenever I want to pray. And I'm feeling all this tiredness and laziness and sluggishness. Just before I pray. I'll say Holy Spirit. Help me to pray. Strengthen me to pray right now. I yield myself to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In a few seconds, I'm on fire. I used to do that when I was learning how to pray. And he always assisted me every time I spoke to him. Some of you, that may be useful to you. Because he's here to strengthen you. He's a strengthener. He's a standby. I used to pray that. I don't pray that anymore because I don't need help. I know how to pray. now. <laughs> you know. But then I was learning, I was growing up. That was very useful to me. Holy Ghost, I'm about to pray. I receive strength. I receive energy. Right now, Holy Spirit, help me now. Thank you, Lord. All my body that was doing funny, funny. In a few minutes, I'm on fire all over the place. Because he's here to help us to pray. He's the strength and he gives us vigor. He gives us power to pray. And the Holy Ghost is there within you to help you. He helped you to pray. The early church made prayer a pattern of ministry. They made prayer a pattern of ministry. A Christian who doesn't pray can never detect God's will most of the time. If you are not given to prayer, you will never detect God's will most of the time. If you want to be a person that understands the will of God, you must give yourself to prayer. And please, it is dangerous for you to make a friend with somebody who is ignorant of the will of God. It is very dangerous for you to hang out and make somebody your friend who is ignorant of the will of God because he will always mess around with you. And nobody will be able to know the will of God if he doesn't have a prayer life. So that means don't make somebody who doesn't have a prayer life, effective, active prayer life, your friend because they can mess around with you completely. So in Acts chapter 4 verse 24, we see the help of the Holy Ghost in prayer. When they had had that, remember they went to preach and heal the lame man and they get beautiful. And after healing the lame man and they get beautiful, they were picked up and they were beaten and flogged. After they were flogged, the Bible said they went back to their company and reported. And when they had had that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. They are praying now with one accord. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they speak the word of God with boldness. A church of about 8,000 people, praying at once with one accord. They lifted up their voices to God and said, Lord, thou art God, who by the mouth of David thy servant has said, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? Oh, they lifted up their voice to God in one accord. When there's no fire in your prayer, there is no prayer at all. When there's no fire in your prayer, you're not praying at all. When you are praying and you can afford to know what is happening in the next room. You are praying and every car that passes, you can tell whether it is a Mercedes or a Toyota. You are not praying at all. 
When there is fire in your prayer, you are not even aware of what's happening next. The person can be standing by you are not aware. Sometimes you are so lost in prayer that by the time you open your eye and look, you are still trying to remember where you are. Have you been there before? You are lost. You are trying to remember where you were. So when there's no fire in your prayer, my friend, I'm not sure you're praying. These guys were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost was in the prayer. And if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you will be found praying. Every time you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll be found praying. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work we are unto. I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. If it is today, they will have started Barnabas and Sons Ministry International. There are a lot of people who believe that once you have understood some little exegesis, you are ready to start an international ministry. But these guys didn't start a ministry. They went in obedience and preached and came back. With all of these. Having heard from God, they went. Hearing from God does not take the place of prayer. Even after they heard from God, they laid hands on them and prayed for them. Hearing from God does not take the place of prayer. Likewise, the Spirit itself also helpeth our infirmity. Romans 8.26 infirmity to take hold together with you against all inadequacies so that you can pray out the will of God. James 5 16 the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. The effectual fervent prayer. The effectual fervent. Many things will happen because you pray. And many things will not happen because you didn't pray. Prayer rearranges things. If you want to rearrange your world, give yourself to prayer. If you don't like the way your life is looking like, give yourself to prayer. Prayer rearranges things. Prayer rearranges your life. Oh, prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. You know that song? Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. You know that hymn? Yeah, very powerful hymn. Prayer rearranges things. Some of you need to read the news before you act. Some of us, we, we pray and we change the news. So we don't need to hear the news. We determine the news in the place of prayer. Jesus in John 17 prayed ahead of time. He prayed ahead of time. Prayer goes into the future to arrange the future. And he prayed very earnestly at the end of his ministry. That's when he should have been relaxing, but he gave himself to prayer. Prayer is engaging the possibilities of God's power. Prayer is engaging the possibilities of God's power. Prayer. John Wesley said, It appears to me that God will do nothing except we ask. Jesus even said, your heavenly father knows that you have need of this, but he still say, ask. Your heavenly father knows, but he still say you should ask. Why? Because your father wants to know that you depend on him who knows that you need it. He wants to know that you depend on him. Somebody called my attention to somebody on Facebook who put out a post and said, I am, I am God. I am God. That's a statement in ignorance. I am God. How can you be God? Eh? How can you be God? Are you omnipresent? Are you? Zoom me in. Are you omnipresent? You are not omnipresent. You can be God. Are you omnipotent? Are you omniscience? 
You are not God. Have I sorted the matter? There are some things that don't need exegesis. They just need common sense. How can you be God? Is there a verse in the epistles that say we are God? There's no such verse. There's no such verse. The, the New Testament calls you a new creation. What does it call you? A new creation. That's who you are. A new creation. You are not, you are not God. You can't be God. There is only one God. And he's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So don't get excited and be saying things that will create loopholes for our attackers to attack us. Did you hear what I just said? Don't be creating opportunities for the enemy to be casting aspersions on the things we teach. You are not God. You can never be God. God is your father. No matter how old you are, your father can never be your friend. Your father is your father. He may give you friendship, but he's still your father. Amen. I said amen. And no matter how smart you are, you and your father can never be age mates. Who is the age mate of his father here? Your father is your father. Even if you and your father play on the floor, he's still your father. Are we here? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm doing correction now. And the scripture is not for correction. Your father is your father. You're not your father. Your father is not you. Your father is your father. Praise God. I mean, these are common sense things. You're born of God. You are? You're born of God. You didn't born God. For you to be God means you existed before time. You shouldn't have a day of birth. <laughs> For you to be God means you were out of time. And you were the one who called the earth to be. Hello? God is creator. He's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, I'm a new creation. Say it very loud. Say, I am not God. God is my father. And my father is not my age mate. Say it very well now. My father is not my age mate. Is he your age mate? Why are you saying it as if you are apologetic? Say my father is not my age mate. Now lift your right hand and shout glory. glory. Amen. <laughs> that should settle that word. So you are a new creation. You are born after the image of him that created him. You are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. You live in your father, and your father lives in you. You and your father are one by identification. By identification. That's very important. Now, when you see a ministry, a church, a pastor fall, it's as a result of non-praying church. When a church doesn't pray for their pastor, they expose their pastor to all kinds of attacks. When a church doesn't pray for their pastor, that's why Brother Paul went all over the place. Brethren, pray for us. Brethren, pray for us. Brethren, pray for us. Any ministry that is not given to praying for their pastor, they expose their pastor to unnecessary pressure and attacks. Prayer clears things and gives your pastor an opportunity to do ministry without distraction. Pray for us that we be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. For all men have no feet. Pray for us that we have a door of utterance. Pray for us that the word of the Lord may be glorified among us even as it is with you. Pray for us. Pray for us. Prayer is so important. So important. If you truly love your pastor, one of the best ways to show your love for your pastor is to take quality time and pray for him. It is called intelligent praying. Praying for your pastor is praying for the nations. Praying for your pastor is praying for continents. Praying for your pastor is praying for millions of people. Because your pastor has, is the one that stands to reach out to these millions. So when you pray for one, you pray for all. 
Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. And when you are restored, your brothers will be affected. I'm not praying for your brothers. I'm praying for you, their leader. Because once the leader is intact, he will take care of the brethren. It is called what? Intelligent praying. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are restored, strengthen your brethren. It's called intelligent praying. When a church give themselves to prayer, they keep their pastor in a place of total cover and defense. No tricks, no strategy, no wickedness, no satanic manipulations can work. Why? In the place of prayer, a defense has been erected. People will gather. Strategies will be measured out. People will plan. The more they are planning, the more they are failing. Why they are failing, they cannot explain. Prayer has gone into the place and is diffusing, dismantling, disorganizing. Prayer is rearranging and shifting things. The more they plan, the more they fail. Prayer is power. It changes and rearranges things. Oh, I love prayer. I, love, I believe absolutely, absolutely, I believe in prayer. I believe in the power that prayer produces. I believe that if believers give themselves to pray, we can see so much in a short time. When we pray, things happen. That's number one. When we pray, things happen. If we want things to happen, we must give ourselves to prayer. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man make a tremendous power available. And this power is dynamic in its working. Dynamic power. Number one. Number two. Prayer brings revelation. First Corinthians 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Prayer brings revelation. That's what brother Paul said. Bow my knees. That the eyes of your understanding. I cease not to give thanks for you. Make him mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The father of glory. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation. Prayer brings revelation. Number three. Prayer produces strength. First Corinthians 14 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. He defieth himself. Strengthens himself. If you want to be a strong believer, you must give yourself to prayer in tongues. Prayer produces strength. Jude verse 20. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying where? Outside the Holy Ghost. Praying where? Inside the Holy Ghost. How do you pray inside the Holy Ghost? When you pray in tongues, you rise like an edifice. You rise taller than mountains and situations. And from that position of height, you speak with authority. Prayer produces strength. You know, it appears to me, Pastor Praise, like in the Bible, the way he spoke about edification by teaching is the way he talked about edification by prayer. So when you pray, you're edified. When you are taught, you're edified. When you combine the two, is edification from all corners. Ziano Katela Beru Katana. Why are some of you looking at me? Hakabaleta. If you're a member of this church and you don't speak in tongues, make sure you don't go home. Make sure you and your house don't meet till you speak in tongues. What, what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? I say, what is that? I say, what is that? Hey! 
some of us are speaking the things anyhow and then you, you cannot speak one Lebo talenga la morekete negila nakara nakita. Ia do 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 la da bababa. Ila mano ketela. This sign shall follow those that believe. Except you are not a believer. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. Somebody say I'm a believer. I talk in tongues. La toba libana korato helega. Woo! Praying always with all prayer in the spirit hila badaga hi kabaya gada bula namagata hege bo jagaya hege bo laja mendo lada boha hege lebo the spirit stands together with us and takes hold together with us against in prayer he helped our infirmity that thing we don't know how to say the spirit takes it from us and presents it above every shadow of doubt. Kayadaba. Thank you, Lord, for the help of the Holy Ghost. So the spirit now deals with our emotions in the place of prayer. Woo! He produces joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, joy where? Joy where? Hey, when you begin to when you begin to speak in tongues he produces joy and the joy of the lord is my strength sometimes when you just finish you feel a refreshing this is the refreshing when you want to be refreshed, just pray in tongues. Prayer in tongues brings a refreshing. It will cause the weary to rest. No matter how tired, when you pray in tongues, you are refreshed. Yeah, that is God's device for refreshing believers. In Luke 10, 21, we see joy in the Holy Ghost. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. He rejoiced where? Where did he rejoice? In spirit. And said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. He agalio. Jesus rejoiced. He agalio. Yeah. He jumped and ran and turned around and sprang up and rejoiced. In that hour, when you give yourself to prayer, rejoicing comes in the midst of prayer. Rejoicing. Suddenly you pray, you just begin to re rejoice. You begin to laugh. You begin to get excited. Because in that prayer, you have taken care of everything that was heavy on you. Sometimes you go into prayer, you feel heavy. Very heavy. But as you begin to pray, as you begin to pray, as you begin to pray, and as you stay in prayer, the heaviness begins to go. After a while, the heaviness is no more there. Then joy comes. You celebrate the victory without even seeing the battle. You take care of things. Sometimes it could be your mother at home. Sometimes it could be a friend in your office. Sometimes it could be a brother in the church. Sometimes it could be somebody you don't know. But in the place of prayer, because prayer is service, God moved you in that direction. And you took care of issues. Am I communicating at all? Yeah. Prayer is instruction. Prayer is fellowship, edification. Prayer is service when it moves into, in, into supplicating for people. You supplicate. Glory to God. There's joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout joy in this house. Can I hear you say it three times? Two. Three. One more time. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Ooh. Ooh. Joy, joy. Huh? I gave you the right key. You are trying to change it. You don't know I'm a choir master. Down in my soul. We need to do rehearsals, man. <laughs> Amen. The Spirit of God expresses himself through our emotions. He expresses himself through our emotions 
in groanings. Groaning means there's a discomfort. You feel a discomfort. It is called a spirit-inspired emotion. Spirit inspired emotion. And sometimes he could express himself in joy. You just find yourself laughing in the Holy Ghost. Nothing physical for laughter. But the Holy Ghost inspires your emotions to start laughing in view of a victory he has already made available. So you find yourself laughing and people think maybe you are not together. No, you are more together than them. Okay, boy, yeah. These are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that. <laughs> These are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that. You know sometimes when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you. It could look like you are a drunkard. Because the symptoms of a drunkard are similar to the symptoms of a man drunk in the spirit. You stagger. You stagger. You stagger. Sometimes even your speech. Your speech is very, very sluggish. That's why I say instead of drinking alcohol, there is something better than alcohol inside you. Juju birikata. Lia tu balara. Hey! 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 Somebody shout, Holy Ghost! He said, Be not drunk with wine. Leave alcohol. There is a better alcohol. It's called be filled with the spirit. Zubilet another. Speaking, you know, drunkards talk to themselves. Eh? I, I hope you know that. I've never been a drunkard, so stop looking at me like that. But drunkards speak to themselves. I've been around drunkards. I see people drink and I see them get drunk. And then when they drink, they start doing funny things. You see a man that is drunk, killing flies that don't exist. You ask him, what is that? He said, these flies. You look around, there is no fly. Yeah, there are symptoms of getting drunk. You know, it's like you're drunk in the spirit and you're busy doing, hey! Hey! And everybody's wondering, what is hey? It's only you in the spirit that knows what you're saying. And then you see people who are drunk, they stagger. They can't stand straight. You know, a man that is drunk cannot stand straight. There is always a twist to the way he stands. You see him standing and by himself he's about to fall. So he will adjust. You know, there's a twist about people that are drunk. And sometimes you get into the Holy Ghost to a point where you are also staggering. So instead of waiting for alcohol, shock the one inside you. Shock the one inside you. The one inside you is beneficial. The other one is destructive to health. Ooh, la 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 la. And then sometimes when people get drunk, they don't remember the way to their house. They don't remember. They arrive at somewhere. We have had people in services, Holy Ghost services, who got so drunk, people had to carry them home. Because if they go by themselves, they will end up in somebody's house. People had to wait, carry them home. And even on their way home, they, they, they were too drunk that at certain intervals, they stopped and manifested. Yeah! Everybody's waiting. This guy has gone too far. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God! And brother, that experience is out of this world. And friends, nothing stops you from having it every day. You can have it in your room all by yourself. You stagger and stagger and sit on the floor and lay on the floor. Hey! And speak mysteries. We have something to brag about. Holy Ghost! I will not leave you comfortless. Glory to God. So the Holy Ghost inspires certain emotions like joy. Like groaning, like agonizing. These are inspired emotions of the Holy Ghost. Agonizing. Jesus was in agony. Jesus groaned. Jesus rejoiced. Also, Holy Ghost inspires, Holy Ghost inspired singing. 
I will pray in the spirit. I will pray with my understanding also. I will sing in the spirit. And I will sing with my understanding. How do I sing in the spirit? Instead of speaking, you sustain the tongues. Singing is sustained talking. Hallelujah. What did I say? Hallelujah. What did I say? Hallelujah. But I sustained it. Hallelujah. So how do we sing in tongues? Sustain tonguing. Sustain tonguing. Angrandambra. Bozakata. Imano Anjanga Brondelia Lengoziana Ela Broda Gengeleana Munda Ladaba Riandoga Riandoga Eliana Riandala some of you are looking at me you will soon go to music school don't worry we pray in the spirit we pray with our understanding we sing where you give rhythm to your tongues what did i say you give rhythm to your tongues there is no church melody there is no church melody there is no bible melody Melody is melody. So the same way, we use the same melody to sing church songs and the same melody is used for secular singing. That is the same way you will find that when you are inspired by the Spirit to sing in tongues, it has a resemblance with singing in the natural. It's just that the content is not the same. The difference is the content. The difference is what? Is the content. So you, you sing. He says, I will sing. He didn't say the spirit will sing. Who will sing? Who will sing? He says, I will pray in the spirit. Who will pray? It is within the purview of you doing it. It's your will. I will wear a blue cloth to church. I will wear a white cloth to church. Whether blue or white, all of them are accepted by the Holy Ghost. I will sing. It's time to sing in the spirit. It's time to sing in the spirit. Some of us can't sing in the spirit. It's time for us to sing in the spirit. When you begin to sing in the spirit, you begin to generate so much strength on your inside. And sometimes you can sing for such a long time. And the same way you sing in the spirit, you can pray in the spirit. And the same way you can also turn it into your understanding. And there are times you can sing in the spirit after a while, you have an understanding of what you are saying in the spirit, you translate it into English. Then it becomes tongues and interpretation, which is equals to prophecy. It becomes what? Tongues and interpretation, which is equals to what? Prophecy. And it will produce edification for the people of God. Somebody is not shouting a powerful amen. Acts chapter 12 verse number 5. Peter therefore was kept where? In prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The church stood in the place of prayer and said, No, you have touched Stephen. You cannot touch Peter. And the effectual, fervent prayer of the church availed. And the angel of God moved in there and brought Peter out of prison. Power was generated. When you pray for me, you generate power that enables me to spring forth and preach this gospel in places where ordinary people fear to enter. See, when you pray for me, when you pray for me, and I'm moving to a place, even if it is governmental powers that are responsible, once I enter, the power of your prayer goes in there to organize things in a way. I am given a platform to speak the word. So you find me preaching in places where ordinarily people are not permitted to preach. 
It's prayer that generates it. Are you understanding? I was invited to an office to just clarify something. And then I got into that office and they brought a group of people for me to address. <laughs> Before you know it, it became a teaching service. Everybody, all day, everybody came and sat. It became a teaching service. And I had the opportunity to teach the word. And they asked questions and I explained. Explain scripture, explain scripture. What created that opportunity for me is prayer. It's prayer. You can't just enter people's office and gather them and start teaching. Office hours. When people are walking, nobody will hear you. But when prayers have gone ahead, prayers can suspend anything and cause the people to listen to the gospel. That's why I say pray that the gospel may have free cause and be glorified. See, when you pray enough for me, even churches where they have sworn that I will not preach in them, your prayers can go there and cause a few individuals who have influence in that church to decide that I must come. And their pastor cannot say no because he knows their level of influence. He will tell them, okay, even if you bring him, tell him not to preach this one. He shouldn't preach this one. That may be the, the only limit that may be there. But even when I come, it's the pastor that will ask for those ones. Because prayer, go, there is nowhere prayer will not enter. Prayer entered the prison, broke the prison and brought Peter out. It shows you there is nowhere prayer cannot enter except people are not praying. So that's why if a man of God fails, it's because the people in the church didn't pray for him. When you pray for your pastor, nothing can scratch him. The man will be making mouth like me and nobody can do him anything. I hope you know I, I make mouth very well. You think this mouth is for swallowing ever? Huh? No. It's for, <laughs> it's for preaching the gospel. It's for declaring the whole counsel of God. It's for rebuke, reproof, correct, instruct. In and out of season. Ziza zo zo zo. I give you a mouth and a wisdom that your enemies cannot resist nor gain sin. La toa. Me anula. Ialuba. Enge bolata. Brenda Gelerebo. Metola yana. I have a right to make all my noise. I have a right to make all my noise. If you are not happy, you can switch off. But this noise, I'm going to make it. After you switch off, I'll be making the noise. When you switch on, the noise will be waiting for you. Guladaba. We are committed to the gospel. In and out of. Somebody say I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Say I give myself to prayer. Say it very loud. I give myself to prayer. Say it again. I give myself to prayer. One more time. I give myself to prayer. No knows. Come unto me, only that labor and a heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Jesus has a yoke. Take my yoke. Jesus has a yoke. But my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yoke and burden is discipleship. A disciple is a carrier of Jesus' yoke and is a bearer of Jesus' burden in the place of prayer and evangelism. Praying always. My little children of whom I travel in birth until Christ be formed in you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. When Jesus gave himself to pray, what did he pray for? He prayed for teaching meetings. The teaching meetings he had, when he prayed, he prayed for them. Number two, he prayed that you will not enter into temptation. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. So prayer takes you out of temptation. Delivers you from traps. Delivers you from setups of the devil. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Number three, Jesus also prayed his desires. 
He prayed his desires. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things soever you desire. When you pray, believe you receive and you shall have. Jesus also prayed for his enemies. Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Why? Because prayer is an earthly activity. Also, you pray for those who persecute you and despitefully use you. Jesus taught prayer because he himself was given to prayer. He prayed by precept and example. Matthew 26, 39. Let me show you something. And he went a little further and fell on his face. He did what? Ask your neighbor, can you fall on your face? Ask your neighbor. Say neighbor, can you fall on your face? Say neighbor, I didn't say can you lay on your face. I said, can you fall on your face? He didn't say he knelt down. Mm -mm. He didn't say he knelt down. He said he fell on his face. There's a level you come in prayer. Where even kneeling down is not good enough. You just put your face down. He fell on his face. And some of us in the past five years, you have never knelt down once. Kneeling down for you is not close by. Prayer has not entered you. When prayer enters you, you won't know when you sit down. You won't know when you kneel down. You won't know when you lie down. You, won't even, you are no more in control. You only stand up and discover all your clothes are dirty. What happened? You've been all over the floor. The thing overshadowed you. Those kind of prayers is what the Bible calls heartfelt heartfelt that is the thing it came from your heart you were not aware of your body this one you are praying and, and, and cleaning your body Zimo ha Zimo ha ha you look at the mirror Liko tada 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 Liko tada Kemana. 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 Yagaba yada. <laughs> well done. <no. laughs> when prayer enter you. Zimona kalada baha. Jesus fell on his face. God almighty. That is so something can enter God. Till God will fall on his face. I thought he created all things. <laughs> Prayer is power. Oh. You pray with your face on the ground. He says my soul is heavy. Filled with emotions. My heart is sorrowful. In Mark 14, 33 to 35. You see all there. His heart is heavy. Filled with emotions. Fell on the ground. He had an emotion as he prayed. You know, some people have never sweated while praying. But when they eat gari, they sweat. But in prayer, they don't sweat. No, I don't pray hard. Though. I pray easy. Uh -uh. God is at hand and not afar. Why should I be sweating when praying? But when you are eating gari, you sweat. You carry handkerchief. You clean your head. As if you are in the battleground. <laughs> so, <laughs> so food. Food gets your attention more than prayer. No. It doesn't make sense. What I'm telling you, I've seen somebody eat like that. He's eating and sweating everywhere. And cleaning. And when he's swallowing the food, you would think there is a fight. Easy. <laughs> Nobody's coming for it. Why are you fighting by yourself? The food has been measured. This is your portion. Take it easy. <laughs> but when it's time to pray, no sweat. 
Helia mata. Helia mata. Balata. <laughs> Prayer. Prayer. Glory! In Luke 22, 41, look at that one. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. He did what? He knelt down. So there are prayers you can't afford to stand. You kneel down. Jesus knelt down. These are different positions that prayer can move you into. He knelt down and prayed. He knelt down. He fell on his face. Peter went up to pray to the upper room. He went up to pray in the upper room. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Hallelujah. You know when Paul got born again, Pastor Praise, the first foundation class encounter of Paul was three days fasting and teaching. Brother Paul's first encounter once he received Christ, he went on three days fasting with teaching. Three days to start his Christian life. Oh friends, there's a place for fasting. It's consecration. Brother Paul says in fastings often, while they fasted and prayed. Yeah. There's a place for fasting. We fast, we pray. It gives us a concentration and a seriousness about the prayer. There's no power in fasting. The fasting is a self-help. The power is in the prayer. Hallelujah. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth more. Say, I give myself to prayer. Say it very loud. I give myself to prayer. Say it again. I give myself to prayer. I didn't hear a powerful amen. So in the place of prayer, we settle issues. We make power available that is, that is dynamic in his working. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'd like you to stand on your feet and I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Say to me very loud, I give myself to prayer. Say it again, I give myself to prayer. Very loud, I give myself to prayer. I pray, I make things happen. I pray, I generate strength in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer, I rearrange things. In the place of prayer, I rearrange my life. In the place of prayer, I store prayers in the future. I use prayer to organize the future. I give myself to prayer. I'd like you to hold somebody and pray for the person. Angalana ma, angalana ma, angalana ma, angalana ma, 
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we decree that the word of God has free course in nations, in cities, in continents. That the word of the Lord has free course. That men and women are coming to the knowledge of the truth. Let's pray right now. Karato bea. Me karato shekelere ba. Babarako toko bo shekelere ba. Mangranda tolo bo robo do shekelere ba. Elego do bo shekelere ba. Babarako daga shekelere ba. Mangranda daga daga daya. Ila barato shekelere ba. Rika patata, Rika Lago in the name of Jesus. If you believe it is done, let me hear that amen like thunder. We declare that the word of the Lord is having free course. Every closed door is opening up. The word is penetrating every territory. Nation to nation. The word of the Lord is having free course. The word is growing mightily. The word is prevailing. Veils are falling off. Men are coming to revelation. In the name of Jesus. Men that sit in darkness are seeing great light. Father, as a church, we agree together. Lord of the harvest, send harvesters to the harvest. Send laborers to the harvest. Send laborers to the harvest. Let them go shout from every nation. Laborers to harvest the harvest. In the name of Jesus. Korato beretana. Ilamananga ladabaha. Membrandoroto sikaladababa. Everyone in this church a witness. Every member of this church a witness. Every member of this church a witness. The zeal of the house of the Lord consume you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. We rejoice. We rejoice. The word of the Lord is prevailing. We rejoice. The message of Christ is growing. We rejoice. The world is coming to the knowledge of the truth. We rejoice. Falsehood is losing grounds. We rejoice. The gospel is being proclaimed. We rejoice. Glory. 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 We rejoice. Glory to God. Glory to God. Liato Belita Naga. Where there was resistance, it's broken. The world is crushing in. He and the Lebo Takaya. 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 Ege Bayana. Ege Bayana. Ege Bayana. Ege Bayana. Ege Bayana. Ege Bayana. Ege 
Praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus. We decree men who sit in darkness are seeing great light. They are coming to the truth. 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 In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Father. We give you praise for answer prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on the note of finality. Can we give the Lord a shout in this building? Glory! Amen! Woo! A believer does not need to break any foundation because the only foundation a believer has is Christ. You don't break Christ. Once you are born again, you are on a sure foundation. If things are not working, it's not because you are under a curse. It's not because you are not born again. No. Things may not be working because of certain miscalculations on your part or lack of skill or lack of sensitivity to when the Holy Ghost gave you direction. But it cannot be because there's a foundation so that is a deception and is fraud to the body of Christ join doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer in new Christian camp meeting 2021 and ask the counselor with Michael Bush theme in Christ realities ministering Dr. Abel Daminer date 31st January to 14th February 2021 time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Yo, Comfort FM 95.1 Yo, Excel FM 106.9 Yo, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Yo, Unio FM 100.7 Yo, and Heritage FM 104.9 and also live on Sundays 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service Venue, Power City International Number 98 Wangibo Road Uyo, Aquaibom State Nigeria. You can also watch this programs live on Kingdom Live Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV decoder. You can also follow Abel Damino's Facebook page, Public Figure, as well as YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram handles to watch real time. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Damino. ladies and gentlemen welcome back oh my goodness what a service what a word i believe you've been impacted affected with the word of his grace listen very carefully it is god's intent for you to continue walking in this light so i'm going to encourage you to keep following remember every day we're live right here on facebook and youtube every day 12 noon gmt plus one 10 p.m gmt plus one and in this season where we're in the midst of a program riot live and ask the counselor you can also be a part of the meetings every evening 6 p.m gmt plus one now listen carefully if you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no christ-centered church where you can attend church two things are very important number one god doesn't want you to be in isolation 
The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren, and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You are denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. It's such a joy to be able to serve you the grace of God. My prayer for you is that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. That the reality of Christ will resonate in your mind. We rebuke sickness, disease, oppression. We come against whatever is not planted by God in your heart today. We command it rooted out. And Father, we thank you for miracles, healings, and testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen to your victory station.